WordPress 6.5 will come shipped with the new Interactivity API. But what is it? The WordPress Interactivity API is a lightweight JavaScript library based on Preact.js, aimed to standardize how developers manipulate HTML in a reactive way. Traditionally, developers would use a multitude of different ways to achieve similar things using vanilla JavaScript. Over time, this becomes incredibly cumbersome and difficult to manage as your application grows with new features and functionality in an ever-growing complex JavaScript file. The Interactivity API aims to simplify this issue. So how does it work? Well, HTML can be broken down into nodes resembling a tree-like structure referred to as the Document Object Model, or DOM. So using the Interactive API, data and information can be passed up and down the branches of the DOM based on the user's interaction, such as clicking buttons, inputting text into a text field, scrolling, and many other interactive gestures. Most of the time, the data belongs to one element and can be referred to as a component. However, the new Interactive API will allow developers to share data across multiple components which can be associated to core blocks, referenced by their namespace. This paves the way for greater flexibility within the core of using the block editor. So for instance, the Interactivity API is already being used in the core for the image block, search block, query block, and navigation block, just to name a few. So why would you use it? Developers can create rich, interactive user experiences from creating simple counters or pop-ups to more complex features like shopping carts, dashboards, or even the interactive games like Dodge created by Jonathan Bossinger. And to use the Interactivity API in WordPress 6.5, you can create a new block from a template using NPM, or you can activate an existing block by installing the WordPress interactive dependencies and adjusting the package and block JSON file and include a render file and a view.js file. However, this can get a little bit tricky to do it this way. So as it's a new feature, I personally would opt for creating a new block from a template. So using the terminal, you can change directory or CD into your plugins folder. And from the interactive documentation, I'll leave a link in the description below, you can run the following command, npx wordpress create block at latest to get the latest version. Give it a namespace, in this case, my first interactive block. Run the flag template and WordPress create block interactive template. Now this will set you up with a very basic interactive ready block. And don't forget to activate the plugin and insert the block into your page ready for development. You'll also need to run the command npm start to start the build process and watch the source files of your interactive block. Once the interactive API is enabled, behaviors need to be referenced on the HTML elements in the render.php file that's bundled with your interactive block. These are referred to as directives and are added to the HTML elements in the same way other attributes are added to elements. All directives are prefixed with data-wp followed by a specific directive name, then followed by a side effect, attributes, event handler, or content. For example, data wp interactive followed by the namespace to activate a component specifically for your interactive block. Note that the namespace is unique to the component, and this is the method for accessing shared data for other blocks. An example of accessing data for a core block might be data wp interactive core image, or data WP interactive core query, or for a custom block, data WP interactive create block to-do list, etc. Other directive examples include data WP context, followed by a stringified JSON value that includes data that will be used throughout your component, or an event directive, for example, data WP on click to trigger a function on click event, or data WP on key up, to trigger a function on the key up event, or data WP on window resize to trigger a function on the window resize event. Now don't worry about trying to remember all of these directives. I'll leave a link in the description below to the documentation on all the currently available interactive API directives. At the time of recording this, it's a mandatory requirement to add the data WP interactive directive to a root or parent element for the interactive API to work up and down the tree of the DOM. Without it, none of the other directives will work. That said, there are plans to automatically inject the directive in future releases of WordPress. So in turn, directives connect the context and the state properties of a global store object that typically references actions and callbacks in a view.js file generated in the interactive block that re-renders data held in the render.php file or effectively in the front-facing part of your website, typically referred to as the user interface. Now don't worry if this sounds a little bit confusing. I'm gonna show you a basic but practical example use case for using the Interactivity API. So let's dive in. 
So Papa G makes pizzas every weekend for his family of four. He uses the same recipe, but next weekend he's having a pizza party and he needs to scale up his dough recipe to accommodate making 25 pizzas, while still maintaining the consistency of his amazing dough recipe. He knows the number of pizzas he wants to make, he knows the weight of the dough balls he wants to make, and he knows the hydration. But how can he scale up his original dough recipe? He's going to need a dough calculator. So let's build this using the Interactivity API. So I've run the following command, creating the foundations for my interactive block in my plugins directory by running npx at WordPress forward slash create block at latest pizza dough calculator hyphen hyphen template at WordPress forward slash create block interactive template. And for your convenience, I'll leave a link to that command in the description below. It takes some time to run, but once it's done, navigate into your interactive block by using the CD command. For instance, in my case, it's CD pizza dough calculator, then run npm start to start the build process. All the files that you need should be bundled when you run the npx command. And if you want to learn more about getting started with modern WordPress development, I'll leave a link in the top left of this video. Now I've logged into my site and I've created a page. I've inserted my interactive block into the page and published it. And this is the page where we'll see all of the development progress. Next, I'll go back to my terminal, create a new terminal window, CD into my pizza dough calculator plugin folder and run git branch. Now I've set this git repo up using branches to show the development progressions, which I learned from attending a workshop at WordCamp Europe, where Lewis Harans introduced me to the concept of the interactive API. He also showed me this way of using Git to show development steps in a clear and simple way. It's a great educational way to understand development steps clearly. So we'll go through each step together and I'll explain the code as we move forward. And if I've still got you by the end, it means I'm doing something right. So if you haven't already, please do subscribe for more content like this. So let's start with step one by checking checking out the first branch, which is git checkout step hyphen one. So essentially we have two files that we're interested in, which is the render.php file and the view.js file. In this step, we're gonna focus on understanding components. So with the interactive API, everything is contained within a single parent element, making data accessible within the context of this element. And the first div echoes out a function get block wrapper attributes. This ensures that all the attributes are applied to the current HTML element. Then we use data WP interactive followed by the namespace. And this is also used in the view.js file. Next, we use the data WP context indicating data and context. Now, this data is represented as a JSON object, but it can also originate from a PHP array as long as you encode it into the JSON format. Since the render file is PHP, it's executed on the server, allowing us to access any data from WordPress that you need. This flexibility ensures seamless integration with WordPress and enables the utilization of various data sources from within your interactive block. Then we have an input field that uses the data WP on key up event handler. For instance, when we type in the input field, it triggers a function called pizzas referenced by the actions in the view.js file. Next, we create a constant variable and assign it to hold some context. Then we use a function called get context. This function helps to get the context from an element that's specified in the render.php file. And we can find this element where the data WP context directive is applied. We set the context calculations number of equal to the event target value that's input by the user in the front end. Then we simply console log the context. Popping back to the front end. So by refreshing the page and checking the console shows how changes in the input field reflect the context that has been set in the parent div using data WP context. All right, now let's move on to step two by running git checkout step two in the terminal. In this step, we're gonna make a very simple change. Instead of logging the full context object, we'll now log the specific number that the user types into the input field. This way we can get more granular when it comes to making calculations later on. So let's test this out. So back to the front end, refresh the page. Now, if I input numbers like 55 and 250, we'll see them logged in the console individually because of the key up event. It might log multiple times if you type quickly, but that's okay. This shows that we can now capture the individual individually inputted numbers. Okay, let's move on to step three by typing git checkout step three in the terminal. Now in this step, instead of just logging data when we type into the input fields, we're now gonna send the context through a function called calculate dough. 
This function simplifies the logic by handling calculations separately. And doing it this way means I don't have to run the calculations inside the individual functions. I can simply fire the function after every single input. It will prevent repetition and potential maintenance issues. So in calculate dough, we deconstruct the context variables to extract the calculations and the ingredients from the context. They can then be used to calculate the dough based on the number of pizzas times by the weight and update the ingredients data accordingly. So for reference in the render.php file, we've set ingredients default values to zero and notice the directives called data wp text and this will be the calculated values from the context ingredients.flower and the context.ingredients.water. Now when we input the new values, they will be updated based on the calculations done in the calculate do function. So if we pop back to the front end and after refreshing the page, inputting values like one and a hundred reflects the updated calculations immediately. Similarly, changing the values updates the calculations accordingly. However, note that the calculation doesn't account for hydration or other factors like salt, oil or yeast, in which we'll address shortly. But first, let's make a small change in the UI to make it a little bit easier to understand by adding some placeholders to the input fields, just so it's obvious what we're actually updating in the UI. Let's proceed to step four by entering git checkout step four in the terminal. Now in this step, all I've added are some placeholders to the input fields to make it clearer what we're actually inputting. So I'll pop back to the front end, refresh the page, and now we can see some placeholders in the input fields, making it easier to understand what values we're inputting for the calculations to work. It's a straightforward step, purely for clarity. Next, we'll move on to step five, where we'll add some hydration by adding more data to our context and other input fields. Okay, so git checkout step five. In this step, like any bread making process, we need hydration value. So in the render.php file, we're adding more data into the context by adding a new key called hydration and setting it to zero. Additionally, we'll add another input field for the hydration percentage. In the view.js file, we've added a function for hydration, which updates the context with the inputted hydration value and then runs it through the calculate dough function. In the calculate dough function, we've adjusted the equation to include the hydration value and updated ingredients for water and flour accordingly. Now with everything updated and saved, we can pop back to the front end, refresh the page and see the new input field for hydration. Now when we input values like 10 pizzas at 100 grams each, and then set the hydration to 60%, it calculates the required flour and water accordingly. However, we still need to include oil, salt and yeast in our ingredients. So in the next step, we'll update the context and data set to include these additional ingredients and their percentages. Okay, so git checkout step six. So in this step in the render.php file, we've added our ingredients data set to include oil, salt, and yeast. We've also added the output elements for these ingredients in our UI. In the view.js file, we've updated the calculate dough function to account for the oil, salt, and yeast based on percentages. For example, oil is calculated at 2% of the water value, salt is calculated at 3% based on the number of pizzas and their weight, and the yeast also has a unique calculation based on the number of pizzas and their weight. So after saving all the files, we can pop to the front end and refresh the page and we can see the new values for oil, salt and yeast. Now inputting values like 25 pizzas at 250 grams each and setting the hydration to 60%, all values for flour, water, oil, salt and yeast are updated accordingly. However, to make these values clearer, we'll add information indicating whether they're in grams, kilograms, milliliters or liters based on their magnitude. And we'll do that in the next step. So the final step is to git checkout step seven. Now in our render.php file, we've added some more information to the context. This includes specifying a value of what the ingredients is measured in. So by default, I'm setting them to grams or milliliters. I've introduced the new data WP text directives for each of the ingredients to accommodate the unit measure. And again, this will come from the context and default to grams or milliliters. This setup will handle different units for all the ingredients. So moving to the view.js file, I've added a new function called convert to metric if needed. And this function takes three parameters, the ingredients, a threshold value, and whether the ingredient is liquid or not, defined by a Boolean, which is true or false value. If the ingredients value exceeds the threshold, which is set to 1000, it converts to the appropriate unit, either kilograms or liters, 
with three decimal places. If it's below the threshold, it remains unchanged in grams and milliliters. So this function is then used in the calculate dough function. So in simple terms, when we input the data values, we check if it's calculated to be over a thousand, and if it is, we convert it to kilograms, otherwise keep it as grams. And the same goes for liquids, where we convert to liters if over a thousand milliliters. So this setup allows us to display ingredient amounts consistently wherever they're dry or liquid. So if I pop back to the browser and refresh the page, we can see that the ingredient amounts display in either grams or milliliters. So for example, if we input 25 pizzas at 250 grams each, set the hydration to 60%, and if the ingredient quantity exceeds 1000, it will display in kilograms or liters, ensuring that we display accurate units. Now there are probably better ways that I could build this and I could revisit it tomorrow and make improvements. So if you have better ways that you think you could build this, I'd love to hear about them and welcome your suggestions. So feel free to share your ideas in the comments below. So in summary, the interactivity API is going to be super useful for all WordPress users in my opinion. It's highly performant, it's lightweight, and by standardizing the way that we use JavaScript in WordPress, we can avoid issues associated with bloated external dependencies or legacy systems that may have some security vulnerabilities. Integrate Integrating this API into WordPress ensures enhanced functionality and security can be maintained with regular patch updates, and it's one less thing for me to worry about. While I've only explored a very basic usage, I think the API offers much more potential, and I'd love to hear what you think. So as always, if you found this video helpful, please do give it a like, and if you haven't already, why not subscribe for more content like this? Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.